up until last year, I was a director of veteran services for the state of Maine. I retired last year. And uh, this program is called Honoring Your Veterans of the Great State. Uh, we started the program actually in 2004 when we got introduced from the legislature to strike points and veterans and certificates to honor Maine's veterans. It wasn't until 2006 until we actually had the medals that we were presenting. And we have the gold star medal that we're presenting today that goes to the families of those who died on that year. We started originally in 2006 just recognizing uh, <laughs> and, and in 2007, I asked Governor Baldacci that time to go backwards, and he said yes. And so we went back and that uh, uh, both after World War II. And uh, our community has to be recognizing the World War II and all of the Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, uh, we went back to World War II. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had the opportunity to present two gold star medals to two living sisters of World War I that died in World War I. Uh, one was born two years after her brother died, because in those days families had families over a longer period of time, and the other one was two years old when her brother died. Uh, one was actually from, from here, Rockland here at Holbrook. Lieutenant Holbrook's family, we recognize. And the other one was from, uh, from Bingham. Uh, so it's a great honor to actually find two living sisters uh, to go backwards. So, uh, with that, we also have certificates we present to our the national flags that hang in the hall flags for World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. And um, uh, with our other medals, we have a Silver Star Honorable Service Medal we present that goes to our Purple Heart recipients and former prisoners of the war. And we have a Bronze Star Medal uh, that we present that goes to the families of those who uh, individuals who die in the line of duty but not in the combat theater. There's a loss of families the same, whether it's in combat or it's in a training accident or whatever on, on, on active duty. So we try to recognize those in doing that. Uh, that's the program today. What was going to happen today, uh, we have a, a presentation, a memo one flag we're going to present today to the family of Thomas McMahon. And then we're going to present 16 gold star medals to the families of local veterans from this area and close by uh, uh, that are Vietnam veterans that uh, died during Vietnam. What I'll do is I'll read and we get ready to present the medals. I've talked to some of the families already. What we will do is I will read the individual's name, his rank of name, his hometown, uh, his branch of service, and date of loss. At that point in time, if the family, can, the family will come forward, a family member or family, it's your choice, uh, how you would like to have the medal presented. But the general will present the medal uh, to the family. Uh, for those who can't make it up here, we'll come to you. So we say to yourself. I would just caution, it's a little bit uh, what we would call, what we used to do in the military, call it route step. Uh, you can't march on, on, on rough grass, so we we'll do a little bit of route step. Be careful when you come forward, because it's a little bit rough here and there. Uh, but generally, I think the presentation is right here. And then uh, what we will do after the fact, we would like after the, after the uh, ceremony closes, we would like the families together so we can get a photograph of all the families at one time. We, you know, we'd like to do that. So individually, we some photographs, but also if the family members want to take photographs, but we'd like to gather the family, all 16 families together we can and take a picture of the families. Will everyone please rise while the Portland Sea Cadet present the colors and remain standing while Portland Sea Cadet Robbie Allen leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance and also I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
place in this event. We ask, Almighty God, that your spirit descend upon us, that we might feel his arm come around each one of us, hear his voice whisper in our ear, all is well. God loves you. He will not forsake you nor leave you. That those who have been struggling for all these years might have the peace that he so desires we have. We pray, Almighty God, that those who may not be found yet, those missing in action, and even those who may have chosen to stay behind, that your spirit be with them also. That in this event, everyone may be remembered. Everyone may be brought closer and closer together. That the fellowship and the comradeship that we shared here in these two days will be to your glory. We ask it for thy praise in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Museum. I want to tell you how honored we are this week to have the Vietnam Veterans of America Limited moving wall here on our property and to have so many representatives from uh, military organizations and families and visitors here to pay their respects to the living and the dead. And it is a tremendous honor for us. And this gentleman Standing next to me, Colonel Peter Ogden has been a tremendous part of our planning committee that's been working for 10 months to make this all happen today. So I leave you in excellent hands. Thank you for coming. Augusta now, <laughs> and uh, we're very proud of that and all that he's done in his career as a in the Air Force. Colonel Farm, say a few words. Thank you, Pete. I, uh, I am uh, one of the best parts of this job is uh, getting to know a little bit about the Army and uh, teaching the Army a little bit about the Air Force. So uh, a little bit of a challenge, but we're doing well. I just want to welcome the families uh, here today and thank you for coming and allowing, uh, and allowing us to honor you. And one of the, uh, the best parts of my job so far has been the ability to be out and representing the today's current airmen and soldiers, honoring those who have come before. And especially over Memorial Day when it's even more of an issue more topic that we're all talking about. Um, we think about it every day, and I think what I tell folks is what I think the best way that we, in our generation, can honor uh, those who came before, particularly those who have sacrificed their life, uh, is to stay eligible and make the decision to serve ourselves. And one of the unique things that has been from the very beginning is that people are joining the military, raising their hand, swearing an oath to a document, a document that represents the ideas that America is all about and how we were born. And that hasn't, that hasn't changed uh, from the very early days to all the wars and to the kids that are signing up today. And one of the things that I want to assure everybody is that those that are listening today in our services. I mean, they were very young. If you think about it, and when 9-11, when they saw the towers fall, they probably didn't, they were too young. 
their whole life they've seen video of those towers falling, and their whole life that they remember the United States has been at war, and they have continued to raise a hand and swear an oath to that same Constitution, those same ideas that your family members sacrificed their life for. And I don't think there's a better way to honor them than that. So, let's get on the show. Services. Well, I'll tell you, eight years home on maternity to leave. We allowed her, you know, she has a new young daughter, uh, born on the 7th of April, so we're very proud of that. Uh, she's new, uh, actually, it's her second daughter, uh, so she has a really a good excuse for not being here today, so we're going to adapt. Uh, with, uh, here today, i uh, to say a few words on, on April's behalf is Dave Richmond. Dave is the actually newly uh, appointed deputy director of the Bureau of Veterans Services. Uh, they're very pleased to have him here to be able to talk a little bit, say a few words, and help will help us. But before Dave became the director, deputy director of the Bureau of Veterans Sources, he was responsible, and still is responsible, for our four main veteran cemeteries. So, Dave. Thank you very much. It's my honor to be here. It was also my honor to be here yesterday. Um, who was here for the ceremony yesterday. So the, you know, you know uh, how moving that, that service was. Uh, everything from the boots on the ground ceremony to the orchestra that played, um, the, the music of the Vietnam era, Doors by the orchestra, was, you know, that was fantastic. Um, the Blind Albert Band that played music from the Vietnam era was fantastic. But I think the, uh, the thing that really got me, it got my mother who, who came with me to the show, was uh, at the very end of the ceremony when the uh, veterans who served in country um, were all asked to stand and they played, they played the Billy Joel song, Good, Good Night Saigon. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. And I think that um, it was, it was, uh, I really just wanted to thank you all for, um, I want to say thank you to the Knox Museum for bringing the wall here. Um, my dad reluctantly agreed to give me a list of the uh, airmen. Five of his A A6 planes in a squadron of 12 were shot down and he lost uh, two, two men for each plane. They were friends. You know, one guy, he wrote me little notes. One guy took a picture of, uh, his A6 in the sunset, that's his Facebook page. I've seen the photograph forever, but I didn't know that uh, the guy who took it was killed. Uh, he wrote in there, they were in order of planes lost. And he, he wrote, um, after the third plane was lost, this is when you were born. Well, I was on a cruise. And my, I think the reason he gave me the list was I told him I wanted to have my son and my daughter uh, visit the wall and make a rubbing of, the, of these men who I've never met. And uh, he reluctantly agreed when we did it yesterday. And it was very important. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for that. <clears throat> That's all I got. <laughs> honored uh, to invite the uh, family of for Special Sports Class Thomas J. McMahon on board. His brother Mike stays here. And uh, Mike, your wife wants to come with you. Can you come up? Uh, come right over here. We are going to present a Congressional Medal of Honor flag uh, to Mike on behalf of his brother Thomas J. McMahon. Uh, Dave will read the, uh, the history behind the flag. The Medal of Honor flag is a light blue flag with gold fringe bearing 13 white stars in a configuration as, as on the Medal of Honor ribbon. Symbolism. The light blue color and white stars are adapted from the Medal of Honor ribbon. The flag commemorates the sacrifice and bloodshed 
for our freedoms and gives emphasis to the Medal of Honor being the highest award for valor in any individual serving in the armed forces of the United States. Background. Public Law 107-248, Section 8143, legislated that the creation of the Medal of Honor flag for presentation to each person to whom a Medal of Honor is awarded after the date of the enactment, October 23, 2002. A panel of eight members made, of, made up of representatives from each of the services, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Coast Guard, one office of the Secretary of Defense staff, one historian, and one representative from the Medal of Honor Society was formed to review and evaluate, and evaluate all designs submitted and make a final recommendation to the principal deputy to the Undersecretary of Defense for personnel and readiness. On 15 December 2004, the design was submitted by Ms. Sarah LeClerc, illustrator at the Institute of Herald Heraldry, and was approved. Public Law 109-364, Section 555, titled Authority for Presentation of the Medal of Honor Flag to Living Medal of Honor Recipient and to Living Primary Next of Kin of Deceased Medal of Honor Recipients, dated October 17, 2006, established the authority to award the Medal of Honor flag upon written request thereof to the Primary Next of Kin as determined under the regulations or procedures described by the Secretary of Defense of Deceased Medal of Honor Recipients. Please, they can stand, please stand for the veterans. Your man, Thomas J. Rank, an organization, Special Force Class, U.S. Army, from the USA, and with Company A. When the league elements of his company came under heavy fire from a well-fortified enemy positions, three soldiers fell seriously wounded. When the league elements of his company came, uh, excuse me, on the next page, uh, Special McCann, with complete disregard for his safety, left his covered position and ran through intense enemy fire to the side of one of the wounded, administered first aid and then carried him back to safety. He returned through the hail of fire to the side of a second wounded man, although painfully wounded by the exploding mortar round while returning the wounded man to a secure position, Specialist McCann refused medical attention and heroically ran back through heavy enemy fire toward his remaining wounded comrades. He fell mortally wounded and before he Now, I, I, I explained a little bit what we're going to do in the presentations of, of our folks. Before I do that, is, those who don't know, there's three young ladies over here in their red, white, and blue uh, shirts. They're the Freeport flag ladies. You see them every week down in Freeport uh, with their flags. Said a little bit of our metal. The Gold Star Metal has uh, 
five little stars on the front of it. They represent the five branches of service, and they're in our gold color. Around the outside of the stars are uh, line boughs with 16 little pine cones. I always usually, when I have a lot of kids in the audience, I ask them, why would we have 16 pine cones on our medal? Because we have 16 counties in Maine. And on the back of the medal uh, is a little, one little pine string and one little uh, pine cone. And it says, to those who made the ultimate sacrifice from a grateful state, inscribe the individual's name on it and their work period on it. Next, uh, Versus Corporal Norman J. Cavalry, Augusta, U.S. Marine Corps, 21 July U.S. Army, 5 May 1968. <coughs> Staff Sergeant Wayne Clifton Sear, Bath, U.S. Army, 7 May 1968.
Guinness Owen Crocker, Bath, U.S. Army, 16 August 1968. U.S. Army, 11 June 1969. Specialist Fourth Class, Ronald Irving Kirkpatrick, Augusta, U.S. Army, 16 July 1969. PFC Gardner John Brown, Union, U.S. Army, 26 August 1969. Springs, U.S. Navy, 29 December 1969. U.S. Army, 26 March 1971.
And we do have some, uh, extra, there's some gold stars up here, gold star hotel tents for some family members that would like some an extra ones. Uh, we, we don't have a loss of them, but you're welcome to come get them afterwards when you come out for the, the, the uh, group picture. Before I call uh, the chaplain forward, I'd like to do my uh, typical uh, announcement and request for help. I was supposed to all, my, all of my ceremonies when I, back when I was in, in uniform as a director, <laughs> that uh, we're recognizing families from, from World War I forward. We need your help. You may know of families that haven't been recognized. You may know of other Vietnam families or World War, you may be a lost loved one during World War II or World War I or Korea or whatever. We definitely can use your help, especially Dave. Uh, and he's going to take the name, or get the name to stop up. We really need help in finding families and identifying where they, their, their loved ones that are left so we can make sure they get recognized. That's the goal, to recognize all of those families. Uh, we still have uh, about 150 uh, uh, Vietnam families to recognize. So we're, we're still working for those, and we want to do that. So we definitely can use your help uh, in finding those families. You may know them, or please put the word out for us and, and, and help us do that. So um, I'd like to invite uh, Reverend James Robbins to come forward first. And I will tell you, he's an Army chaplain from Vietnam. Uh, I, I love my Army chaplains in Vietnam. They were very special to all of us there. Uh, Major Robbins is, is, has a little tent over there. Yeah, you can buy the, the wall. He has a wall. He has a, his Army chaplain. He has his chaplain stuff on He's been sitting in the tent waiting for somebody to show him. <laughs> Every once in a while, you need to grab something to go by. I am very honored to be here as a Vietnam veteran and, and see uh, uh, nurses from Vietnam here, chaplain from Vietnam here. Uh, we know other veterans are going to be here like that, but, but I'm really impressed with the people here that's supporting the process. And we have two uh, chaplains here, that's the Army chaplain, and we have a minister here, the Vietnam veterans, so uh, it's great to have them here. I know how special it is for them to be able to stay in the place of things for us. Thank you, Chairman. Concludes the ceremony. For those families that let get participate in the group, please come. Uh, we'll find a place that's got a lot of areas we can put together. We'd like to do that if possible.